Biomedical engineering, many, many years ago, as a discipline didn't exist, but it was a way to bring it together so that your desire to work in the field of medicine would use your engineering skills and knowledge. And uh, fields like, uh, like neuroengineering, where you learn about brain and brain science and brain disease and engineering to solve the problem, kind of helps you synergize the two. So I, I think if you find in society, biomedical engineers are playing a lot of roles. Right? Nowadays, medical schools have a lot of biomedical engineers and industry, they are starting new industries. So it's a hot field. I think the biomedical engineering field is uh, very uh, stimulating because as an engineer, one of the things that you want to do and as a researcher is to actually address issues that are um, important problems. Many other fields, I think some of the problems are really mature and it's very difficult to make an impact. Um, in something like biomedical engineering, I think, it, and bioengineering in general, it's a very um, newer area, there's much more to be done, and it's, as, as a result, I think it's much more stimulating. I thought that uh, biomedical engineering is a, a real instrument to help people who are ill or who, are, who lost some of their functions and so on. So, as a person, I thought that it's more human to go in that direction, to help people and to try to give some results in the field of biomedical engineering. Well, I started out as a biologist uh, and then I switched to a solid state inorganic chemist and now I'm a material science and biological engineer. And I think that, that biology has so much that we can learn from. So I'm, I've been interested in, in, uh, in evolution and, and genetics since I was you know, 10 years old. The first company I worked with was actually uh doing something similar to what I had done in graduate school, which was automating a process. We were trying to build a nitinol stent, which is, nitinol is a, a shape memory alloy. So it's a self-expanding stent um, that inserts into the body. And it was being made by hand by a small startup company in Boston. And I was brought in to automate the manufacturing process to bring down the time, because it was taking two or three hours to make each device by hand, and they needed it built in several minutes. My background is actually more from a classic business education. Um, I have a Harvard MBA and studied um, business management and international relations. But my career in industry has been focused on healthcare. I'm an electrical engineer by training. I actually did my PhD at MIT and uh, I worked for an as an engineer for a while and then I went back to school and I did an MBA at the Sloan School of Management at MIT and I shifted towards business. So I worked in uh, software development for quite a while in uh, other engineering projects and uh, companies before I eventually made it to the VIS Institute as a director of operations there. So I actually started my career in finance and we actually use a lot of the similar techniques in finance as in engineering and even though finance is a very interesting and exciting field I found it not nearly as rewarding as something that is much more applicable and uh, much more hands-on. I can feel that I'm actually helping somebody. Uh, so I, in my senior year of college I ended up pursuing a, a mock biomedical device company where we built this EEG keyboard where we help paraplegics basically communicate when they really don't have any, ability, any, any other uh, method to communicate. And through that project, I got really excited about biomedical engineering and I kind of made the transition from finance into biomedical engineering. So I grew up around Aviation Week and Space Technology magazines. But, so I was always interested in engineering, but I didn't know what discipline to, to go into. I actually had a friend who was paralyzed in high school in a car accident, and I started looking into medical technologies that could actually assist him, you know, neurological stem or regrowth, and, and was pretty unhappy with the state of the field that I found, so I thought I would go into biomedical engineering. The personal draw f from the engineering perspective is really that you kind of feel empowered to find solutions on your own. You feel that you have, once you've done through some basic training, you actually have the power and the ability to build something then and eventually, of course, uh, change the world in so many ways. It started when I was a teenager and I looked at uh, the Six Million Dollar Man uh, TV show and I wanted to do that. So that was the idea when I, when I was very, I mean, a teenager. Then growing up, I realized that what I like is really the possibility to take engineering and use it 
for the improvement of quality of life of disabled people. I was in high school working in the basement of my parents' house and my older brother was in medical school doing his medical degree and a PhD in pharmacology and as a pediatric pharmacologist he was trying to develop new therapies for babies with very, very, very serious diseases like leukemia and he needed very precise, very accurate, very safe little devices uh, that could sit in an isolate with a premature baby and deliver tiny amounts of drugs very, very accurately. And so I made equipment for him. The wow in biomedical engineering in this case was the wow in neuroscience and understanding the brain. Uh, it certainly has all of those characteristics that drive a lot of people into biomedical engineering, which is uh, the potential for doing things that help humanity. Uh, but it, it's probably an equal mixture, maybe more the curiosity about the science that's underlying it, thinking that uh, engineers had a role to play and could make a critical difference in the way in which the science was done. Many people interpret personalized medicine as just, let's pick which drug for which person. So it seems like relatively easy, let's get blood, let's get tissue, and let's figure out the gene or protein um, that's there. But it's so much more than that. Um, my, the company I recently founded on Cuity was based on circulating tumor cells. That's all about the re-engineering of capturing tiny rare cells in the midst of the blood. That's only possible through the convergence of different technologies and different skill sets to come together to be able to capture these cells and then analyze it. So many of the technologies that have been developed for microelectronics industry, like uh, photolithography and being able to make very small miniaturized uh, devices, are very applicable to this um, development of new technologies in art regenerative medicine and making artificial tissues because you can actually control cells at very small length scales and make things like blood vessels and other things that have these microscale features. So I think the electrical engineering kind of uh, technologies that have been developed for microelectronics industry can be very easily adopted to making artificial tissues. What we've started to do over the last uh, several years is to be able to, through combinatorial uh, studies, basically trying billions of, of DNA sequences at a time, can you find a protein that can uh, grow a uh, solar cell and, and uh, grow and assemble components of solar cells? Or can you find uh, a DNA sequence that codes for a protein that can assemble a more efficient uh, battery? In my lab, we demonstrate we can control flying a helicopter by just the, the thought of the human subject. Okay. Such kind of thing would never happen before, but I think in the next 10 years or so, uh, this line of research will likely to have a big impact and moving into clinical practice. Whatever we do uh, to promote the science and healthcare will also have effect on the other part of the world. So there are no boundaries. I feel that is our moral and ethical responsibility to promote health sciences, healthcare, biomedical engineering globally.